This is a podcast from the Business Times. Welcome to Podcasts by the Business Times. In this episode, learn about the continued power of real estate and whether real estate income can keep pace with inflation. This episode is brought to you by Nuveen. Welcome to Podcast by the Business Times. I'm your host, podcast editor, Clarissa Montero. The property market hasn't been spared the onslaught of market volatility. In fact, the still recovering global supply chain unleashed inflationary pressures on all industries, pandemic-induced labor and material shortages, logistics gridlocks, all added to delays and cost hikes. Construction was no exception, with costs here in Singapore spiking between 20 and 30 percent. Can perhaps commercial real estate provide some relief for our portfolios? But will real estate's income keep pace with inflation? Is there any upside left to capture to help us answer these questions and give us insights into the continued power of real estate? We're joined by Richard Kimball, Managing Director and Lead Portfolio Manager, Real Estate, Nuveen. Richard, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Let's go straight in. Now, how can an allocation to real estate help private clients in Asia mitigate the market volatility we're seeing in 2022? Well, I think real estate really uh, provides an important role in an investor's portfolio for three reasons. One, the steady income that real estate provides. And two, if you look at the historical correlation of real estate to uh, fixed income and equities, it has a very low correlation to equities and a negative correlation to fixed income, which provides it a great diversifier, which will lead to stronger risk-adjusted returns. And lastly, and more importantly in this environment, real estate as being a hard asset is a natural inflation hedge. With higher inflation leads to a higher construction cost, which means if a developer wants to build a new building, it costs them more, so they need more rent. More rent is uh, great for the existing market. Right. Okay. And I imagine there's some sifting through that gets involved to find those opportunities. Which real estate segments should investors be in and which should they avoid? Yes. So today I still like industrial. There are still stronger uh, industrial demand. Uh, especially throughout the U- U.S. If you look at our top 50 markets, all 50 have lower vacancy rates than their historical average. Supply is uh, not catching up to demand. Therefore, we're still seeing higher rental rates. So I like that sector quite a bit. I also like alternatives such as medical office, life science, self-storage, and data centers, just giving the underlying demand fundamentals. And also in this environment with uh, higher interest rates and still strong fundamentals, we really like the investment debt space. What about what you don't like? I think in today's environment, uh, we don't like office, and there's a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. Office is typically one of the most most expensive sectors to run, given that a lot of its uh, NOI goes to capital expenditures that erodes its cash flows. And then today also, uh, a lot of occupiers are still determining Uh, the new hybrid work environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's one sector to avoid. That being said, there are two markets that we think are very attractive globally, one being here in Singapore and the other being in Seoul. I think they are really benefiting from the influx of companies relocating their corporate headquarters, given some uncertainty in other markets within the region. Okay, now we've talked about how real estate can help mitigate the market volatility. Um, Now let's talk about how private clients can achieve their sustainability objectives. So a number of global uh, real estate investment managers, including Nuveen, are taking on sustainability measures, including reducing energy intensity within their portfolio, putting together pathways for zero net carbon and timelines to get there, and also building communities by buying and improving affordable uh, housing projects, 
Uh, and in doing that, that all those implementations will help the underlying investor help achieve their sustainability objectives. I do think when investors are looking at port- uh, managers to partner with or uh, funds to go into, I think they need to ask the question, what are those managers doing to improve sustainability and how are they getting there? Mm. 2022 to 2023, do you, th- you see a big difference, a big shift in what investors are going to be looking for? Yes, I think they're looking to reduce volatility within their portfolio. I think income continues to be an important uh, factor when in- investors invest. So with those reasons, I still think private, uh, private real estate is a strong investment. Still to come, what is the outlook for 2023 and beyond? Let's find out when we come back with Richard Kimball from Nuveen. And now, back to podcasts by The Business Times, brought to you by Nuveen. Richard, how do real estate investments perform throughout the cycle? I think on a risk-adjusted basis, they perform very well when you put them in relation to uh, bonds and equities. They have higher returns in fixed income and then very much equity-like returns with much lower volatility that make them a strong investment. I think where real estate gets in trouble is where we have oversupply, over leverage, and where we have a deep recession with job, uh, with job losses. All of those are not occurring at this point in time. So we still feel very good about real estate. The fundamentals are strong. What we have today is just capital markets uncertainty. Okay, now for the longest time, we had pretty flat interest rates. So let's talk about that. How well or not do these assets hold up in both rising and falling interest rate environments? Right now, it's rising. Yeah, so we've looked back at different points when we've had rising interest rates, and real estate has done very well after this time. And why is that? Rising interest rates is a signal a very strong economy, and strong economic fundamentals help real estate fundamentals. Uh, When you have a lowering economy, I think that typically signals uh, there might be a problem. We need to inject some uh, some juice in the economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that depends on, again, where did we get hurt? Why are we, why is, uh, why is the economy down? And how does that affect commercial real estate? But I think the benefit of real estate is that steady income return. Right. Okay. Now, the big question, we're coming to the end of the year. What is your outlook for the sector in 2023? Yeah, so I think it'll, the uh, valuation and fundamentals will uh, very much uh, vary by sector. But if I look at real estate in general as a whole, I think transaction volume will de- be down the first half of 2023, just given the uncertainty in capital markets. And then I think it'll open up at the end of at the second half of 2023 as we see more liquidity come into the market. Okay. Before I let you go, do you see interest? rates stabilizing in 2023? (laughs) We can hope, right? We can definitely hope. I think our long-term view is they come down. I think that really depends on do uh, the global economy get inflation under control. But it's our view that they do come down. If you look at the uh, U.S. Treasury, you've got the inverted yield curve, which uh, projects that Mm -hmm. we do anticipate it comes down. I don't know if it'll be at the uh, middle, second half of 23, but that's our our view as they come down over at least in 24. All right. Thank you so much for the time, for the insights, Richard. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Richard Kimball, Managing Director and Lead Portfolio Manager, Real Estate, Nuveen. And that's a wrap for this podcast by The Business Times. I'm podcast editor, Clarissa Montero. This episode of Podcasts by the Business Times was brought to you by Nuveen. That was a podcast from the Business Times. Send your feedback to podcast at sph.com.sg. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcast or, via the Google Voice Assistant Amazon-enabled devices. For more podcasts by The Straits Times, The Business Times, and Money FM 89.3 you can also download the audio by SPH app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O. 
This podcast is meant to provide general information only. SPH Media accepts no liability for loss arising from any reliance on the podcast or use of third parties' products and services. Please consult professional advisors for independent advice.